So today I'm going to be talking about a trend that has taken the world by storm, or indeed TikTok, because that's where all the trends are these days, uh, Chinese spyware. This whole trend that has started is actually one that I find quite frustrating, especially given that I live this aesthetic myself, and to stop being elusive, the trend is that of quiet luxury. It's a new aesthetic trend that's emerged basically as a response to the flashy and overtly branded and gaudy fashion that has honestly dominated the industry for many many years now think back to the logo manias all of those luxury brands that you can think of i know that there's probably a lot of fatigue so i'm not surprised per se that this quiet luxury trend has emerged at the moment apparently we're into minimalist designs understated aesthetics and apparently just subtle hints of luxury that subtly denote that you are part of, I suppose, the upper class. Brands have really embraced this approach. A lot of luxury designers, I think like the Laura Pianas of this world in particular, are prioritizing a lot of the craftsmanships, discreet logos, or none at all, over loud and obnoxious, potentially, branding. So what does this look like actually in practice? You don't have anything flashy on you, no real discernible logos, so it could be a lot of, you know, thinking cashmere or wool or linen clothing. It's all about the less is more aesthetic, so you can expect to see a lot of neutrals, a lot of blacks, maybe a turtleneck or two, and you'll distinctly note there are no bold prints, no bold colours, or obvious logos. A lot of people like this trend, not just because, like I mentioned, it's a break from, I suppose, the fatigue of logomania and the obnoxiousness, but it's also the fact that quiet luxury has become increasingly synonymous with old money, with that of the upper class, and you could argue, you know, this taking inspiration from soaps or dramas like Succession covers, I think some of the characters wear very kind of minimalistic clothing and that's kind of how it got popularity, at least I think on TikTok. Also people like the Sophia Richies of the world have probably popularized that kind of old school glamour look. So I think that's where this want, this desire to dress more subtly and just be a little bit more low key has come from. And you know, arguably if you are so flashy, you really have no money at all. I think a lot of people are welcoming, and certainly I have over the many years, this kind of sophisticated and refined fashion sensibility. I don't do bold colors, I don't do bold prints, I don't do logo manias. If I do have one logo, I never do a logo clash. I want my wardrobe to endure, and so that's always been my aesthetic, and so therefore to hear that this has now become a TikTok trend, that people are trying to emulate this style without it actually being part of who they are, it's probably very obvious in this video that I'm not a fan of this trend. First of all, I feel like it's personally very shallow. It's this weird weird Gen Z obsession to just do what other people do. It's obviously something part of the human condition where especially women as well are very impressionable and they want to do what will make them popular or will make them fit in. I feel like this is very very damaging to this demographic because you feel compelled to buy certain items of clothing or think or say certain things when you actually don't really believe it yourself by having these young women emulate it but not understand the undertones and the kind of characteristics that one who is elegant should bear and they're just copying something for the sake of being relevant and this leads me on very nicely into my second reason why I don't like this trend and that's because I feel like quiet luxury is very misleading it implies that luxury must be very hushed up or subdued despite the fact that there's so much diversity and creativity that the fashion industry offers, it's not just in this very restrictive kind of framework that quiet luxury has basically stipulated. So take for instance, the iconic Hermes Birkenbag. Even though I have opinions on this as frequent watchers of my channel, we'll know. I cannot deny that this Birkenbag epitomizes luxury. People know that this bag is quality. They know what it stands for. They know how hard it is to get and they know the value of this item. Because it is so recognizable and it is a status symbol, it doesn't really blend quietly into the background, despite the fact that there's no discernible logos. So this Birkin bag is a big example, I feel, of how bold luxury can also coexist with refined elegance and that there is no kind of one br broad brush stroke that you can apply because a lot of advocates of the quiet luxury trend, they go on about Hermes bags, specifically the Birkin and of course the Kelly, but actually they are very, very well known status symbols. It would be very hard to find somebody that doesn't know what this bag is and what it means. So I think it's very misleading 
visually anyway, to say that only things that don't have discernible logos on them should be worn in this trend because realistically that is just not possible. If you buy something that is luxury, the nature of it is something that's going to be recognizable because it's not something that everyone can get. Now on to reason number three and this one is around the fact that I feel aesthetic trends like this quiet luxury one in particular are very restricted with no room for individual style because again it's a very distinct category that people put you in. I think it's important to celebrate diversity and individuality that the industry offers, that your personal style offers. So I think you should definitely embrace that, whether you do like to mix loud or vibrant prints, colors, designs, with those that are more elegant or subdued, I think that's a personal choice. There are plenty of people in this world that I feel like are elegant, but they don't follow this quiet luxury aesthetic to a T. It takes someone like Zendaya, I think she's very, very well styled, but is she always in a long gown all the time with wearing neutrals or in a turtleneck? No, she's in very nice and flamboyant dresses. And she also does things that are a little bit more dressed down. I like the Kylie Jenners of the world. And you, you can actually, as a side note, see Kylie Jenner trying to get so far into that kind of quiet luxury, refined, minimal aesthetic. I think she's trying to go as a side note for Sophia Richie's look. And I must say Sophia Richie has turned around her image quite a lot recently. But anyway, those things aside, I think being classy and elegant doesn't have to be just one thing or the other. I think it's just consistency in wearing things that make you look sophisticated, show off your frame without being too much, those kind of things, and having an individual style. And now this leads me on to number four, and this is that I personally feel the quite luxury aesthetic is problematic because it is not the same as actually being elegant and sophisticated. You cannot buy class. I think that is a very popular saying. It's very true in this particular scenario because no trend can mimic a lifestyle. I think being quiet luxury or old money or whatever is about being well-mannered, humble, kind, just a decent human being. And a lot of these lessons and etiquette and just being well socialized in the world, those are the kind of traits that are actually elegant and sophisticated, which is obviously the main goal of this quiet luxury aesthetic, right? Even if you were to dress this aesthetic, but then you open your mouth and you start being vulgar in your language, you start cackling like a crazy person, or you start twerking on the street afterwards, how on earth is this congruent with that aesthetic or what it signifies? When you're dressing quiet luxury, you're giving off an impression, you're giving off a persona, that you are sophisticated and very hard to come by, I suppose, nowadays when you are surrounded by vulgarity and nudity all the time, right? But if your behaviors don't add up to what you look like, then I think that's just a total contradiction of the whole reason why you're dressing in that way, which allows me to round off this video very nicely with my final reason, number five, and that is I feel the quiet luxury trend cheapens genuine elegance. It does seem like a costume you can put on and off as opposed to a lifestyle and a state of being and who you are. And you know, you can't buy class. Like I said before, I feel like true elegance exudes from your person in the way that you interact with other people and treat others. It's not just in your dress. Your dress is one way that people can make a snap judgment when they look at you because humans are like that. Let's not deny otherwise. But also if you, as soon as you open your mouth or your body language and just your gen general demeanor about you and the way that you carry yourself, I think that speaks more and that speaks volumes compared to what you're wearing. And I actually think if people invested more in the quiet luxury etiquettes and got themselves that, I think we would all be much better off as a society. And I think to be honest, the true quiet luxury should be there for being educated. It doesn't mean you have to be book smart, that's worth clarifying. I think you can get those smarts from anywhere really, if you were to network or to set up your own business or whatever, I think you can be, you know, street smarts, but definitely being educated. And I think being hardworking, having discipline and having good etiquette when you're greeting others and, you know, just being a general decent human being. And I think all of these come under the fact that you need to have years of experience. You need to hone these traits and characteristics towards it instead of just thinking that a wardrobe will be this kind of one fix that you can apply. But I do think it's worth talking about because I do like the aesthetic myself. I would say if I was to fall into a bracket, I guess technically I would fall into it, but I just don't like the fact that it's a trend. 
I personally think as looks fade, as trends come and go, class is eternal, that will always stay. And I think it's honestly what's on the inside that actually counts. I think if you're ugly on the inside, I think that's gonna overshadow any nice jumper or loafers or whatever that you are going to wear. But that being said, I would love to hear your thoughts on the trend down below. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you as always for watching and I will catch you in my next one.